Hello and welcome to another show and tell. This time, as you can see, it's finally here. Uh, Austerlitz, 1805. That's a beautiful artwork. Now, this has a, a very interesting story. I've been waiting for it since uh, the beginning of this year. Uh, this is the Kickstarter version. I backed it up last year. Uh, it was supposed to come at the beginning of this year, then uh, the pandemic uh, happened, and then it was delayed, and then it was sent. I mean, not this one. A copy was sent in the uh, end of May, and it's still somewhere in limbo in the Romanian postal system. Uh, like I had uh, a few other uh, mishaps like that so uh, nothing new there well I had uh, good uh, tidings with the Romanian post office but uh, the postal system but uh, I had uh, uh, very bad stuff so yeah it's somewhere still out there um, the people at Trafalgar Editions were uh, kind enough to send me a second copy and this one was tracked and uh, it was actually through a courier and then it finally arrived and lo and behold I have this one. Um, uh, like I said before I'm a, no, I'm a self-professed Napoleonic buff when I heard about an, Aust uh, an Austerlitz game, when I've seen the pictures of the components, I said I'm gonna jump right in and back it up. Um, back it. Uh, I usually don't do that on Kickstarter, mainly because uh, I have uh, heebie-jeebies with uh, the shipment, uh, shipping, and not only Kickstarter. Uh, I lost a few uh, opportunities online. For games that I uh, really wanted, Terrible Swift Sword, for uh, from a beloved uh, uh, internet uh, creator, content creator in the wargaming field, I chickened out because uh, uh, I was afraid that uh, I would lose the game in the uh, postal service and stuff like that. Uh, for, I took a chance with this one, and it uh, in the end it turned out to be uh, for the best. For uh, all in all, uh, it was uh, a bit uh, uh, nerve-wracking. Um, I mean, the waiting and stuff like that. But in the end, it turned out okay. So I got the game, and I got some bonus stuff. Some. Uh, interesting miniatures a row of uh, artillery and uh, two officer looking uh, dudes and something that says cemetery which is uh, odd but um, it's bonus so so let's see what what this one uh, has for us I really don't know exactly what it has inside I mean the what the components actually should look like I have a fairly a fairly good idea it, it has a uh, game components uh, componentes del juego uh, list here so we have uh, two maps one counter sheet two marker sheets two deployment maps one terrain table I hope it's not too bright. One combat table, three scenario sheets, one rule book, and two six sided dice. Uh, this is, of course, a uh, uh, tactical game of Austerlitz. Perhaps Napoleon's uh, best, uh, I mean, uh, the brightest tactically brightest victory so we have a uh, regulamento 
have the rules. So these are the rules in this. Uh, we have Austerlitz 1815. I believe this is a typo. Uh, that's Waterloo, the Waterloo campaign. But uh, we have the rules in uh, in a Spanish. Um, we have the Reglas Juego Solitario, the solitary rules. Uh, this time it's 1805, so that's a typo over there. So uh, the rules are uh, 70 pages long, and from the 18th page onwards, we have the solitary rules that go. Uh, as far as the 24th page, then 25th, Ejemplo, Turno de Juego. So we have uh, examples, game terms. We have a uh, uh, step by step exemplification of a game turn. So we have 32 pages all in all. Um, then we have the rule book in English again 1815 that's a bit of a typo um, not very many uh, well in the example game turn we have uh, some illustrations but uh, all in all there are f rather few we have a few oh, no, there are a few over here very uh, I mean, it's not crammed, it's uh, very there, may, there are many spaces, there are breeding spaces, and also the rules are not crammed, they can be read fairly good. I have to check them out. Uh, so we have the sequence of play on the back. Uh, again, Astrid 1815. That's a typo. Then we have uh, some player aids with the. I believe that these are some sort of uh, uh, setup aids or something like that. I might be wrong, but then we have uh, uh, some scenarios. These are, these are this is in uh, Spanish. Camino a Ternitz, the road, road to Ternitz. Yes, scenario road to Ternitz. So they're uh, two-sided. One is uh, in Spanish and one is in uh, English. Then we have second scenario, Flanco Norte Lan. This is Bagration, uh, the northern flank, Lan against Bagration, or Bagration. Um, then uh, Los Franceses attacking and Pratzen. So the French attack the Pratzen Heights, Pratzenberg, well, Pratzen, Pratzen Heights, but I believe. But the, there is a, there is a. Uh, locality there. So the third scenario is that. There's a locality named Pratson over there. So we have uh, fire modifiers, fire and combat table, uh, combat modifiers, English and Spanish, and player aids, then tabla del terreno, uh, the terrain effects table, English and Spanish. Uh, I really like this because uh, this way I can uh, brush up on my uh, very flimsy Spanish. Uh, that's a beautiful language, and uh, that's that's another ex that's another um, I don't know um, opportunity to learning something new, both historically and uh, linguistically. Then we have a counter sheet with a lot of little counters. There's a rather small so I have to look out the tweezers will be I look out to not uh, lose them the tweezers will be uh, used uh, uh, intensively. Then we have uh, 
another counter sheet. These are very thick counters, but the counters themselves are uh, quite small. We have artillery templates, canister shot templates, squares, French and uh, Russian, I presume, or maybe uh, Allied Russian and Austrian. Oops, that's uh, not quick. Uh, or rather, it's Godzilla. Then units, unit counters. They can be read from a distance, so I believe they're okay like that. Just then we have some fog table. So these are some screens, I believe. Yeah, maybe. So these are the Russian and Austrian. This is the Russian and Austrian and the French screen. So I believe there are some sort of screen. Well, uh, I believe some sort of fog of war mechanism is in order because uh, that's a uh, uh, yeah, some dice. Um, that's uh, always the problem: how to recreate without scripting the possibility of that uh, beautiful uh, maneuver made by the French, that uh, genius uh, Napoleonic maneuver to withdraw from Pratt's and Heights uh, and with the right wing refused and then when Davout arrives uh, retake the Pratt's and Heights and uh, uh, pulverize the Allied uh, army uh, that's uh, that's a very difficult maneuver to pull off when you know the units the French units are coming or you know the general uh, course of uh, the uh, French tactic. I mean the the general idea of the French tactic. So um, it could be you know, a one-off uh, situation, and you can you cannot replicate that and stuff like that. And you can uh, choose between going to script the game, which is uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, historical retelling and uh, uh, letting it go uh, uh, free but with uh, more modest uh, uh, results. So we have the map, two pieces, that's a very nice map in my opinion, I like it, I like that uh, old and new uh, together in one so it has the Kriegspiele feeling it's not uh, in a, it's not broken up in uh, hexes or in, uh, areas or stuff like that it's really a map with I have to see how they uh, manage to to hold the movement and stuff like that under control uh, in a controlled game environment but um, uh, that's one of the the uh, interesting things in discovering and looking forward to it so it's really a really nice map not very colorful it has some colors uh, some uh, symbolic elements like Ratzenberg or Santon here over there uh, with a few uh, uh, urban uh, or rather village type uh, zones like uh, so called needs turn it we have the set oops we have the search and pond here all the the important landmarks so yeah then the turn track the victory point track artillery leader for the French and the allies so yeah, um, interesting, very nice, uh, mounted maps, two pieces, very thick cardboard, I like them. So uh, this is about it, uh, once again, beautiful artwork, 
I just love this. Uh, all in all, that's about it about the uh, Austerlitz 1805. So, uh, from uh, Trafalgar Editions, I'm looking forward to uh, dipping my toes in this. Uh, in these uncharted waters for me. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, thank you for watching. Goodbye.